What we're going to be looking at here are cash rebates using coupons here where they're offered with the sale of a product here to promote the product here. And we're going to be going through a basic example here. Say this appliance company places one coupon in each coffee maker box that they ship here to the retailers. Now this coupon is redeemable for a cash mail-in rebate here of $10. Now the company sells 48,000 of these coffee makers at $100 each. That is the appliance company here sells them to the retailer here for $100 each and it's estimated that 40 percent of these coupons will be issued here will be redeemable here uh, and then during 20x1 the first year 11,500 of these coupons were redeemed that is they were sent back here to the appliance company by uh, the customer who purchased uh, one of these coffee makers here so first thing we have to do is we have to compare uh, do our computations here on this uh, rebate of our coupons. So the total coupons issued here in 20X1, 48,000. They uh, shipped 48,000 of these coffee makers that included a coupon with it here. And then the total estimated um, amount that we're going to be redeemable here, well, we take the total quantity of 48,000 times. We estimated that 40% of those would be redeemed. That equi equates here to 19,200 uh, coupons that are going to be redeemed here. Now, the coupons that were redeemed here in 20X1, well, we know those to be 11,500. So uh, the, the estimated future redeemable coupons here is just simply a difference between the total amount here estimated on 19,200 and what was redeemed here in 20x1 11,500 leaves us an estimated future amount of coupons to be redeemed here at 77,700 here. So now let's look at how we'd record this here. So again we're looking at a rebate here offered with the sale of a product. So our for our product sales here in 20x1 uh, 48,000 uh, uh, coffee makers here are shipped to the retailers here at a hundred dollars each costing uh, costing our sales price here to the retailers a hundred dollars each which gives us uh, product sales here of four million eight hundred thousand dollars here now the cash rebates here in 20x1 the first year well we had eleven thousand five hundred of those rebates sent back here to the appliance company at ten dollars each uh, it, that equals one hundred fifteen thousand dollars here in cash rebates first year 20x1 now what was remaining Meaning here uh, in these cash rebates that we're sitting here on these uh, coffee makers that we estimated um, th the rebates that would be returned here was that 77,700 7, again times ten dollars each for seventy seven thousand dollars here in cash rebates estimated for the next year here 20x2 we assume there uh, that what was remaining was going to be uh, sent back here in the next year here 20x2 so how would we record this here so what we're going to be looking at is a rebate liability here for these cash rebates here that haven't been uh, returned to the appliance company yet or to the manufacturer the product here we're going to have to set that up as a rebate liability here and then we're going to also have to recognize our rebate expense here. Those are the key items that we're going to be looking at here. But before we do that, let's just uh, record here our product sales. So what we had, uh, we would have for, let's just say it was a cash sales here in these coffee makers um, to the uh, retailers here on our balance sheet here. Uh, for four million eight hundred thousand dollars, we would debit our cash account for that here, and then uh, over on our income statement, our sales revenue would recognize that again in twenty x one here at four million eight hundred thousand dollars. Okay, so. The key thing is here when you're dealing with these rebates or these coupons or what we're dealing with, you have to recognize your rebate expense. Uh, you have to match it with the revenue, uh, the revenue sales on those. Um, your, your rebates, which are revenue sales here. Your rebate costs, which are revenue sales. So, what we would do here are rebates that were redeemed here in the first year. Remember that was $115,000 worth here. Again, on 20x1. Now we also have to account for our rebate costs to the accrued estimate that for future uh, rebates that were expected on the, we're estimating on those coffee makers here, and that was $77,000. Again. Those were the cash rebates here for 20x2 that were estimated. But nonetheless, we have to include here in the first year when we made these sales here, the total sales, we have to include our total rebate expense here for the first year. Those have to be included in here. So we include our total rebate that we're estimating here for both the redeemed amount for the first year here and what we estimate to come into our second year, all recognized in the first year here. So what we're doing is we're um, charging our cost of our rebates and our coupons here to the expense in the period here of the sale. So we, uh, our costs 
our rebate costs here are matched with our revenues here. So we had all our revenues here uh, for all those coffee makers here in the first year here. So we have to match our rebate expense here in the first year. But what we're talking about setting up this rebate liability here, since since if we're looking at our first year here, we have to set up a liability account here for the $77,000 worth of cash rebates here that were estimated for the second year here. Because that, that's sitting on our books here. So on 20X1, we would set up our credit, our rebate liability here on our balance sheet for $77,000. And again, liability here. Okay, so now what we would do here in 20X2, now this is where we would be reducing our liability since we assume all those cash rebates are going to come in here uh, in the next year here, 20X2. So what we would do is we'd uh, credit out here, or we take our credit amount here of $77,000 or rebate liability and debit it out here for $77,000. And then we would, uh, again, it was a cash rebate here. So I'm just putting it against our cash account here. Debit rebate liability here for 77000 and then credit cash or reduce our cash account here for 77000 And that, I'm just using this here as our cash rebates. And then remember here for 20X1, we also had that cash rebate here of $115,000. Credit out our cash here at 115000 and that would have matched our rebate expense here that we, uh, the rebates re redeemed here on our income statement. Debit amount here for $115,000. So the key is here, when you're dealing with these rebates here, any uh, rebates, any of the rebates that you hadn't currently used for the period or haven't been returned here for the period here, you have to set up as a liability here on your balance sheet. So you have to set up a liability, uh, in this case, a credit amount here for $77,000 for that second year of rebates that we're going to be estimating that are going to be returned. And then you can credit it or remove it off the books here when the rebates are actually returned here in the next year here. And then you'd recognize that in this case a cash expense here on the rebates. And then the other thing we want to go back and talk about is this rebate expense here on our income statement. Be you have to, whatever the sales you make and whatever coupons are included in those sales that you make in your boxes there, you have to recognize as a rebate expense because you have to match whatever you sold up here that included the coupons with whatever is redeemable with the what you estimate here for the coupon. So you can see that is the key point here. So we had our rebates redeemed here for the year 20X1, but we also had to recognize as a rebate expense here the rebate costs that would be a crude estimate here. We have to estimate that out here. Okay, so that takes care of uh, the very simple um, example here using what a cash rebate here and how you have to set up the liability for any of the rebates that are still outstanding.